Greetings, Dan Halligan from k to Games, and welcome to an instructional video, which is going to show setup of the second edition of Obsession, published in 2020. Second edition can be identified by the crown with the 2E in the upper right-hand corner for second edition. It's also a thicker box that can accommodate all expansions and promotional materials in one box, if that's your preference. Along with the second edition, we're going to be featuring every expansion in this setup video. We're going to be featuring the Wessex expansion, which is also in its second printing. It shares the same second edition iconography here in the upper right. So that will be included in setup. In addition, we're going to include the upstairs downstairs expansion. The upstairs downstairs expansion was the headliner of the 2019 Kickstarter campaign and that will be included. We'll have some mention of promotional cards and materials. There was a promotional pack which emerged from that Kickstarter campaign. So all these games are going to be included in this setup video. However, the reality is, and I don't know whether you want to blame yours truly or you want to blame the number of options that are available to us, if I systematically go through everything as it comes up in the setup, it will be a setup video that goes 45 minutes and no one will watch it. So I've devised a new strategy, a new approach, and that is I am going to be very surgical in my setup video and where there are obvious glaring gaps in information, you're going to see banners that will point you in the direction of a specific video for a specific topic. I believe I counted 10 such support videos that are part of this setup video for all the products. Hopefully that's going to allow people to, if they just want an overview of setting up these things that they're getting from their Kickstarter campaign and they're excited about, they can bang through a quick video. But if there's something that's unclear and they want to go check it out, they can follow one or maybe two videos and get the detail that they're looking for. Hopefully that concept works out. Let's start the setup. For those of you familiar with Obsession, I'm sure you're surprised to see the supply board as the first component put out on the table. Traditionally, we would set up the player area. and When that was complete, we would then set up the central play area of which the supply board was the main component. But with the upstairs downstairs expansion, in particular with the use of the upstairs downstairs servants, it is much simpler if we establish our servants for hire at the beginning of the game in order to populate the draft and then to repopulate the servants for hire afterwards. I'll bring up on the screen different numbers of servants used for various player counts, this from the upstairs downstairs rulebook. The number of underbutlers used is always two in any given player count. We're setting up for a three-player game with a player here, a player here, and a player here. So that means the number of footmen will be two times the player count, or six. The number of valets and ladies' maids is equal to the player count, three apiece. And with the upstairs-downstairs servants, it is also equal to the player count. That means three cooks three head housemaids, three useful men, and three hall boys. Our servants for hire are complete for a three-player game of obsession using the upstairs-downstairs servants. Again, the reason for populating the servants for hire is because with the use of the upstairs-downstairs servants, we begin player area set up with a servant draft. One of each servant is now displayed for the servant draft. I'll flash in. The hall boy, the useful man, the head housemaid, the cook, and the familiar footman, valid, and ladies maid. We begin player area setup by randomly assigning the first player marker. The player to the left of the first player will begin player area setup by choosing a family board and drafting a servant. Selection will then go clockwise with this player choosing second and the first player choosing last. This player, the last player, drafts family Ponsonby and drafts the useful man, placing him in available service. This player drafts family Howard, 
and drafts the head housemaid, placing her in available service. And the first player drafts family Wessex and drafts the hall boy, placing him in available service. The remaining servants from the draft are returned to the servants for hire area. And now the servants for hire area is complete and ready for the start of the game. We are playing a standard length game and acquire the reputation wheel counters for a standard length game, which is the one, three, and five counters with the max tile. These are stacked and placed on the reputation wheel. If an extended play game was being played, an additional 7-8 counter would be included in the stack. Players locate the reputation wheel marker, place it in position 1. Next we acquire the 5 starting servants for each family. I'll lay him down so he's more visible. The 5 starting servants include the butler, the housekeeper, the valet, the lady's maid, and the footman. Family Howard's advantage is to begin the game with a cook. Well, I should have taken that cook from the servants for hire. I ended up taking it from the box because only Wessex and Ponsonby are going to be able to acquire a cook. There should only be two more left in servants for hire. So everything flowed perfectly here, but I should have just supplied that cook to Howard from the servants for hire. Now, that would not apply to Family York. So Family York's the only other family that begins with an extra servant, a footman. That's because there's no limit on the number of footmen, valets, and ladies' maids that you can acquire if they're available. So that extra footman should get supplied from the box and not from the servants for hire, which is probably why I made that mistake. My apologies. Since we're addressing a family advantage, the family advantage for Ponsonby is to begin the game with 300 pounds. We'll address the family advantage for Wessex in a moment. Players acquire a country estate organizer. To make room here, I'm going to slide this down and put the organizer here. And here. In the second edition of Obsession, there is an integrated country estate organizer on a two-sided player board at the bottom. This provides some options for different table configurations where space might be at a premium. Acquire the five start tiles indicated by the building in the upper right hand corner and place them according to their color in the country estate organizer, either the integrated or the traditional standalone country estate improvement organizers. We'll address the Wessex family advantage, which is that they begin with a second level tile, either the tennis court or the breakfast room. Their special tiles, which come in the Wessex expansion box, have a small mini start tile indication with this building in the upper right-hand corner. Next, families acquire their four starting family members, which is the head of the household, the heir, the lady of the house, and the young lady. If Asquith was a family in use, they begin the game with a family advantage of having a relative, the Dowager Countess, Asquith, living with them. So they start with five family cards. Set these family cards by each player board. In this video, we are setting up for a game of Obsession that uses both expansions, the Wessex and the Upstairs Downstairs. So far, that is represented by Ponsonby, which is from the original game, Howard, which is from the Upstairs Downstairs game, and Wessex, which is from the Wessex expansion. We are now, as we select starter guests, going to include the five cards from Wessex, the seven cards from upstairs downstairs and the 15 cards from the base game of obsession all of these starter guests are indicated by a crown below the prestige rating in the upper left hand corner i've moved the supply board up a little bit so that we can see the family advantage tile for wessex there are two ways to distribute the starter guests one is to randomly deal them out, which can be a bit risky because there is a mix of favors and service requirements that can be unfavorable for some people. I recommend a servant draft, which is in the glossary. Servant draft takes two times the number of players, so in this case six, plus two, eight, and creates an eight card starter guest draft deck. Going to the last player, that person is able to review the cards, choose a guest, pass them over to the next player clockwise. They can review these, choose a guest, 
comes to the start player who takes two guests, returns back this way, another guest is selected, and another guest is selected there. The last two cards are returned to the remaining starter guest cards, which will be used in the central setup in a little bit. These cards are combined with the family cards to create the starting gentry guest deck. The distribution of objective cards is the final step in player area setup. It is important to realize that if you are using the upstairs downstairs servants, you are required to use the objective card deck that came in the upstairs downstairs expansion box. Five objective cards are dealt to each player and player area setup is complete. To finish central area setup, we pick up where we left off with the objective cards, which the remaining cards are placed as indicated. The next step is to place on the pound symbol beneath the Derbyshire name a supply of 100 and 500 pound coins. The coins are not finite. If they were to run out, please use a suitable substitute. Next, we will populate the casual guest deck indicated by the single floor delay under guests in this location. We begin by taking the leftover starter guests, which are a specialized subset of casual guests, and we are going to combine them because we're using all expansions with the 35 casual guests that come in the Obsession base game, the 10 casual guests that come in the Upstairs Downstairs expansion, and the 6 that come in the Wessex expansion. These are shuffled well and placed in this location. The next step will be to populate the prestige guests in this location. We'll take the 25 prestige guests from the base game of Obsession. We'll add in the 16 prestige guests from the Upstairs Downstairs expansion and the 5 from the Wessex expansion. We will shuffle these thoroughly and place them in this location. For a three-player game, we choose four monuments according to the rules, including the Sculpture Garden. These are going to go into the tile bag. Next, we're going to set out the round track for a standard play game. The reverse side is for an extended play game. We're going to locate the white pawn and put it in the first round position. We will locate the two Fairchilds. They can be identified by their name or by a blue frame around their crest in the upper left-hand corner. They'll be placed in Alderley Hall in preparation for courtship. The Upstairs Downstairs expansion offers an option for those who did not like the small courtship cards that are in the base game of Obsession. We will be using the larger courtship cards. We have our theme cards, which represent the courtship interests of the Fairchilds. Those are very thoroughly shuffled and placed in this location. And the Victory Point cards identified by a VP in the center of the card. These are shuffled and placed in that location. Next I'm going to address the question of promotional cards. These are cards that have only been lightly play tested. They were uh, sort of playful extreme cards designed in conjunction with backers and 16 of them come in the upstairs downstairs expansion box. Using all the promotional cards is very likely to break the game but for enjoyment purposes I'm going to include a couple both of these promotional cards are prestige guests. I will shuffle them into the prestige guest deck and replace them there. Next, we're going to take advantage of a Kickstarter stretch goal, which included milestones in the upstairs downstairs expansion box. I've selected two at random, which is the number of milestones that can be used. They function like public objectives, where players attempt to be the first one to complete an objective here to flip seven tiles or here to acquire 11 servants. We'll place those there. Next, in conjunction with the milestone, we have small chits that can be used to claim the milestone. Two for Ponsonby, two for Wessex, two for Howard. So we come to the final part of setup, which is to initially populate the builder's market. A little bit earlier in setup, we had put the four monuments that we had wanted to use in the bag. And in addition, I've put every other tile I want to use during the game in the bag as well. For previous rule sets and previous editions, we had done a lot of sorting of tiles. But I think it is much simpler to just know the rules for the initial population of the builder's market 
And then when you pull out your tiles, if something doesn't qualify, just return it to the bag. The rules are very simple. Every tile has a prestige rating. And because we want our initial market to reflect the starting position of the humble estates trying to restore their reputation and, and do some renovation projects that are within their grasp, we don't want to bring out, hey, how about this promo tile, the grand ballroom. No, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to have prestige ratings of one, two, or three in the builder's market to begin that game in that first season, along with any service tiles, excluding the servants' hall. The servants' hall is a little overpowered if somebody gets that very early in a game because they will relentlessly milk reputation off their opponents at a time when just one or two reputation is so key. So that's excluded, but all other service tiles qualify, plus any tiles with a prestige rating of one, two, or three. Once we're aware of those initial population rules, then setting up the market is quite easy. And if there's conflicts, there's a new tile sorting system that'll help us resolve those conflicts. So I've got everything in the bag. And you might ask, well, Dan, what about new tiles? What about integrating Wessex and upstairs, downstairs and the promo tiles? That is a, a whole video topic in and of itself. And you will see the references in the banner in this section to go look at how you evaluate what tiles go in the bag. It's going to add an extra 10 to 15 minutes to this video and that's just not the right setting. So that's one of the reasons I've created this format where we can branch off if there's interest and go pick up uh, additional rule detail as needed. So I have everything in the bag. I reach into the bag and I just grab a stack of tiles and pop them out there. And let's go through these tiles. We have a prestige rating four, so we're not putting a music room out there. That's beyond the capabilities of our, our folks early in the game. Butler's Pantry, that's a service tile. Long Gallery, way beyond the capabilities of our families. We have a Servant's Quarters, that's a service tile. Croquet Lawn's good, it's a two. Cricket Field, <laughs> I don't think so. And Tennis Court, so I got four, so I'll grab a little bit of an additional stack out of the bag. What do we have? We have billiards room. Nope, we're not there. Now service hall, this is a service tile, but this is the one service tile that we're going to exclude from initial setup. That's going to ensure this tile, which is a complete renovation of the, essentially the, 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 the servant's living quarters, that it comes in at the expensive end of the market. Unless it's later in the game, then it can be acquired in the reserve. So that's excluded. We have retiring room, yes. Main library, no, we can't renovate a library, no question. And state room, that's no good. So what do we have? We have two, four, five. So we need to dig in and we have the last one is a one. So we're good. Whoop, knock that over. So now we have six tiles, but we're not sure where they go in the market. Boy, we went through some gymnastics in the past to answer that question. Gymnastics no longer. We sort by these small numbers in the lower right hand quadrant of the tile. That's the tile sorting number. So we have 40, 43, 50, 25, 15, 45. Whoop, that was 50, the tennis court. So that goes there. So we just put these in order from lowest to highest. And we have set up our initial population. And you are ready to play the second edition of Obsession, complete with all the expansions.